Uh, before we get started, can you tell my fans who you are and where you're from? Uh, my name, are we live right now? We live right now. Oh, my name is David Chance. I'm from New Jersey originally, but I live in Atlanta now. Okay, definitely, definitely. And uh, how long have you been an entrepreneur, and what made you uh, decide to pursue it as your career? Um, I mean, shoot, I've always been an entrepreneur since, uh, since I was about six years old. Okay. And, uh, I mean, I've, I've always just had an opportunity to, um, to explore it. Like, I had an idea to rake some leaves, so okay. I raked the leaves. I had an idea to sell some candy, so I sold candy, so it wasn't... As if I, I just became an entrepreneur one day. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been an entrepreneur. A lot of and I think a lot of people have that same story where, you know, they've always wanted more and wanted to be more, wanted to do more, have more, um, and been thinking that way for a while. But, you know, some people just, you know, haven't been successful at it, but they're still entrepreneurs, you know? Definitely. I can agree with that. You So basically, ever since you were a kid, you were doing things to ge- generate revenue and you just uh, decided to make that your career through the d- um, the different dreams and goals you had. Absolutely, absolutely. And then um, with you pursuing it as your career, what was the first sign of uh, success you had that showed you you were on the right path? Um, see, I, I, I guess I look at it a little different because it, it wasn't just a sign of success. Like, oh my God, this is... You know, I did this one thing and now it's working. It's like every failure, mm. so to speak, or everything that, um, you know, everything that I lost was a sign that showed me that I was on the right path. Like, if anybody's taking notes, you may want to note that failure is a prerequisite to success. So mm. you will know that you're getting closer to success when you fail. Right. They say you'll fail your way to success if you just keep falling forward and never stop. Um, your brand is called Sleep Sleep is for Suckers. Um, can you explain to the fans how you came up with that concept, and um, what 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 is the the brand um, for to you? Oh, good question. So um, the name of the brand again is Sleep is for Suckers, and it's geared toward entrepreneurship and anyone that's willing to lose sleep to get what they want out of life. So all of our shirts have a positive work ethic feel to it, and it's not well in the very beginning. I did give up a whole lot of sleep in the very beginning. I mean, it was like late nights, early mornings. I worked all day on my job um, and shoot all night on my dream until it was time to go to work in the morning. But, um, I mean, the the message has evolved so much over the last few years. And I've started to recognize that there's a whole lot of different ways to be sleep. So, you know, those people who watch TV all day or, you know, play video games all day or go to the club on a regular basis and spend so much time in these places um, of, of uh, unproductivity, mm. right? We consider that sleep. Those are all forms of sleep. So um, we encourage people not to sleep in any area of their lives. Mm. I like that. You know, that's kind of what from. I like that answer because when I first heard of it, um, I thought it really meant just stay up all day and stay up all night pursuing your career. So it's nice to hear that it's broken down more into staying awake, staying woke to what you spend your time and energies on. Yeah, 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 for sure. Now, again, in the very beginning, it was very much so that, right? I mm. mean, it was, it was an all-night grind. It was all night grind. I'm working. That's why my, the name of my book is called Dreams Are Built Overnight. And um, I literally built this dream overnight into the wee hours till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. That's when I was building. Mm. And, um, yeah, I, I built it because I couldn't build it during the daytime without a job. Yeah, I can relate to you. Um, I run uh, Stop Beef from Radio. We're an internet radio station, and we've been doing it for 12 years. But I have to have a 9 to 5 to keep my wife happy. So, you know, I can relate to you, the staying up, working through your hours at the job, but, you know, still focus on your dream. I can't get a job. I don't, 
Mm. Like, I, I could, even if I wanted a job, which I don't, which I don't need one, but right. even if I wanted a job, I couldn't because I didn't help so many people with, you know, this entrepreneurial journey. I, you know, I, I talked about my story on how I never go back to another job, which I won't. Right. Um, but you have the opportunity to sit and grow and learn and um, and have your your business funded by another person. Right. So, and once you figure it out, it's not that stressful, um, but embrace that journey, man. Like, this is all part of the story. Mm. And you're a very uh, motivational person because, um, you know, I first learned f- through uh, Breathe You when you started doing the Entrepreneurial 101 um, videos, and then I did some research on you, and you've been doing those videos for a long time. You know, what was the concept behind doing those videos, and why did you decide to give away the game for free versus how most people would try and sell the information you're providing? Man, listen, my coach is CJ, so, like, I mm. followed a blueprint, man. <laughs> I followed a group blueprint. They, they did videos, but my thing was, I am not going to do the video on the green screen right. because you know EC did that already, and I'm, I'm like, yo, I need to figure. I need to find something um, unique to me. I need to find my own twist because I refuse to do it how EC did it. Right. It's not that anything was wrong with how he did it, obviously, but that's how he did it, right? So I need right. to come up with something different. So. Um, I'm going to just continue to provide content for those who can't pay me. Mm. Right? I mean, it's not, it's not all about money, but you, you got you to gotta, you gotta be able to provide content for those who can't pay you. Right. Because if you still want to make a difference, if everything you do is for money or everything you do, um, somebody got to pay you for it. Well, I mean, do you really, really want to help people? Yeah. So um, it does two things. One, you get to help people who can't pay you. And two, um, you get to continue to sharpen your ability. I have to continue to come up with content. I put out so many videos, like I can't even go to a venue and talk about something from the video. And mm. I continue to stretch myself. Like ET, you don't run, they don't run the same message twice. Right. Like he's giving you fresh food. So uh, my goal is to continue to give fresh food. And the uh, the more you do it, the better you get at it. The sharper, the more learning you get to learn more about yourself, your own style, your own tone. And um, I enjoy it, man. And that's good to hear, like, um, you know, you and E.T., you know, like you said, you you, you come from his um, mentoring or uh, leader, you know, teachings, but you're not taking his path. You you do your own thing. And I think that's very powerful because sometimes people have somebody of his caliber mentoring them and they might try and be them. But it's very obvious when you watch your videos, you, you might have the same style of teaching, but your content, your delivery is all unique to yourself. Well, here's the thing. I'm not necessarily being mentored by E.T. I'm okay. being mentored and coached by C.J. Mm, okay. Which, um, which is, you know, the, the guy is, he's a strategist, man. Like, from, I, I, I can't even, I, I don't even know how to explain it, man. That boy is genius. Right. Like, real level, high level genius stuff he got going on. So, um, yeah, I, I get to learn from the best of the best. And he took E.T. from just a good speaker to... Um, you know, the best in the world, man. Right. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm real, I'm closely, I, you know, obviously I get a chance to, you know, speak to E.T. I'm not on a regular basis, but I get a chance to speak with him and, and talk to him. But, you know, C.J. is kind of like the person who um, is shaping my style. And everything I do, C.J. has to approve it. So, like, I can, you can really blame C.J. for, like, you know, the, me coming into my own style and, you know, everything, man. I, 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 I own. And, and that says a lot to, about you, too, because CJ could pick anybody, and he chose to pick you. So um, going off that, how did you meet CJ, and, you know, what what did you do um, to encourage him to become someone to mentor you? I, I'm, I'm, I'm grinding, man. I'm mm. grinding. And um, we have a mutual friend that uh, we would meet over his house. Like we we wouldn't meet, but you know, if like my friend was having an event or something like that, right? He would, uh, you know, CJ would be there and I would be there. And you know, one day, I guess he told the dude, God, like we we talked for a little bit. He's like, yeah, I got the guy that I'm working with. You know, he does these videos every month, every uh, Monday. And you know, I like your brand. And I was like, shoot, well, show me what he got. Mm. And um, he showed me some of the videos because before then, I hadn't heard of him. Um, but, you know, sent me some videos, and uh, I was just a fan ever since. 
friends. Mm, that's powerful. And they say your network is your net worth. So that person that you guys had as a common friend might not have, you might not have looked at it as a reason to further your career, but then it ended up giving you that opportunity. Now I want I want to talk to you about your book. Um, Dreams are built overnight. Um, I understand you wrote. You know you were working at the Cheesecake Factory, and that was the last job you've had. Um, what was the final straw that made you leave that that job, and what gave you the 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 passion to go out here and help all us other entrepreneurs become successful? Um, it wasn't really a final straw. It was a uh, it was a, it was a, a gradual. Mm. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't, I don't, I don't necessarily um, adopt the Steve Harvey philosophy of just jump, right? right? Um, but you, you create that bridge, you build a bridge, brick by brick, day by day, um, product by product, sale by sale, customer by customer, every single day, you're building a bridge between your job and your dream. And um, I strategically built a bridge. So by the time I left, I had replaced my income already. So it wasn't like I'm just jumping out on faith. Okay. Does that make sense? Right. I, I didn't just jump out on faith and say, yo, I'm out. So you know, it, it didn't really work like that. It was more strategic. Like you had been planning and plotting, building your cash flow up, building your business to where when you finally left the Cheesecake Factory, you weren't jumping out uh, without a parachute. You had your parachute and you had everything ready to go so you could be successful. Absolutely. I was just grinding, baby. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was a steady, steady grind, day in, day out, grinding. And, um, yeah, I, I told myself, you know, once I get to a certain number, I would quit. Okay. I got to that certain number, and I quit. <laughs> mm. That's powerful, man, because not a lot of people are, take that initiative. Now, was that when you started the Sleepless Sleepers for Suckers and got the kiosk with the clothing line? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I started the Sleepless, Sleepless for Suckers company um, while I was working at the Cheesecake Factory, and I was able to, um, you know, re replace my income. So I went from working five days a week on my job and two days a week on, mm. you know, this brand, the Cheesecake Factory, you know, working at the Cheesecake Factory. Um to, you know, like freeing up my time to only working four days a week on my job, then working three days a week on my job, two days a week on my job. It was a gradual transition. So that's, that's what I that's what I do mainly, man. I teach people how to make that transition. So mm. not big and scary. Like, let's acquire the skills. You got to acquire the skills first. Right? right? I think that's what people are trying to skip. You can't skip the, the skill acquirement. You just want to make the money. Even if you make the money, you don't have the skills. You won't even, you won't know how to sustain it. Mm. You won't have to do it. You won't have to do it again. Right. Like, I, want, I want to be able to. I want to get to a point where I can do it again. If I lose everything right now, can I do it again? Right. And, um, and I can. Mm. That's probably. I think uh, I watched a lot of your videos, as I said, after I as I got introduced to you through the Breathe You University, and you know, two of my favorite ones is the one where you talked about how you took the Cheesecake Factory and you didn't look at it as just a job, but you learned it as you used it as a sales course. So you would learn how to sell their product, so therefore you could turn around and sell it, sell your product, you know. Um, For sure. And I think that's a lot of insight because not many people understand that the day-to-day -day task of a job is actually what you learn for your own business. And then the second one is when you taught the girls how to spend fifty thousand or make fifty thousand off a two hundred dollar investment. Um, not a lot of people know how to reverse engineer like that. So for the people who ain't familiar with that story, can you go a little bit into that, that, that what you told them girls and um, who, who taught you to reverse engineer like that? Um, I don't know. I've, I've always thought like that. Okay. Um, I mean, I read, I read this book, uh, you know, some people use reverse engineering. One of my mentors uses reverse engineering. That's where I originally got it from. Um, Jonathan Green, but I, re I read a book called uh, Backwards Reasoning. Hmm. Uh, well, it's, it's a theory called Backwards Reasoning, yep. where you start at the end um, real quickly. There's a game called 21 Flags, right, where on your turn, you can take one flag, two flags, three or three flags on your turn. So let's play this game. Let's run through it real quick. Okay. Um, there's 21 flags, okay? On your turn, you can take one flag, two flags, or three flags, right? So okay. on my, team, my turn, I can take one flag, two flags, or three flags. The goal is to take the last flag. Mm. You follow that? Right. The goal is to take the last flag. So we'll start out with um, 
21 flag. If um, you want me to go first or you want to go first in this game. It's like back and forth. If I go, then you go, then I go, then you go until someone takes the last flag. Okay. Um, you can go first. All right. So um, there's 21 flags. I'll take one. There's 20 flags left. I'll take you three. Take one, two, or three. I'll three take three. Flags. Okay, we got 17 flags left. I'll take one. There's 16 flags left. I'll take three. There is 13 flags left. I'll take one. There's 12 flags left. I'll take two. Um, you take two. There's 10 flags left. I'll take two. There's eight flags left. I'll take one. There's seven flags left. I will take three. There's four flags left. Hmm, you got me. I'll take, uh... Absolutely. Yeah, because if I take any of those, you're going to end up getting the last one. Okay. Mm. I'll leave you with four flags. You're in a position where if you take one, I'll take the other three. You take two, I'll take the last two. You take three, I'll take the last one. I have to leave you with four. Well, there's a step that we can take before that. Because if I leave you with four flags, the step before that is I have to leave you with eight flags. Because if I leave you with eight flags, if you take one, there's seven flags left. I'll just take the last three. Now there's four left to you. Mm. If I leave you with eight flags, you take two, there's six, there's six flags left. I'll take the other two, now I got you at four. I'll beat you again. Well, we can take this one step further. For me to leave you with eight flags, I have to leave you with 12 flags. Right. For me to leave you with 12 flags, I have to leave you with 16, and then we take you to 20. So when I took that first flag, you were left with 20. So, I beat you then. So your goal is to have an odd uh, uh, a number of four on every turn. Absolutely. Every game mm. is beatable. Every game is beatable, but I knew I knew that from the very beginning. So, right. what position do I have to leave you in, and then and then I'll work, work our way backwards? Well, there's another game called Hot Potato where I leave you with the last flag. There's a way to figure that out on how to win that game. So, mm. um, it's just knowing what you want in the very beginning and going to get it strategically, not just oh, I'm gonna start a product and I'm gonna sell it. How you gonna sell it? Right. Well, I'm gonna promote it on Instagram. What? does that mean? Right. What does promoted on Instagram mean? I don't understand. Hmm. Well, I'm going to make posts and stuff like that. Everybody makes posts and stuff like that. What are you, what are you saying to me? Yeah. What are you going to do different than the next person's doing? I need you to figure out how to beat the game. Hmm. I like that because that's kind of what we've done with Stop Beefing Radio coming out of Indiana. Like, you know, um, we had to be the first podcast before it came out. So we were thinking, I think, 10 years ahead while everybody else is thinking one year. So, like, when we were playing that game, you were picking one at a time. I got fixated on you just taking the one, and I was trying to think of the quickest way to get you to zero. But in actuality, I was putting myself at a distance or disadvantage because... Like you said, you knew the rules of the game. I didn't take time to figure out the rules before I started the engagement. Wow, just take time to figure out the rules, brother. Definitely, definitely. That's that's dope, man. Um, I know you're a busy person. I ain't going to take too much of your time, man, but I, I do really appreciate this opportunity. So if you have a few more seconds, I'd love to get a few more pieces in, or if, if you're out of time, I understand that we can, you know. Oh, uh, let's do it. I mean, I, gotta, um, I just have a uh, webinar at 930, so now we good. Okay, definitely, man. Appreciate that. Um, hold on, let me get back to where I was. Um, so when someone, so you've mentored a lot of people, you've went to a lot of schools with the kids and everything like that, which I compliment you majorly. Um, what are what is the thing you've learned from the kids, and what is the thing that you give to the kids when you go in um, to mentor them? Um, what I've learned from the kids is. Uh, they really just need somebody who cares. Um, that's, you know. Um, I, and and, and here, here's the thing, um, and not knocking any other, you know, organization, because, you know, I'm, I'm glad everybody is, uh, you know, there's other people that are doing the same thing. Yeah. But uh, I think there's some people that shouldn't be talking to the kids. Mm, they're just powerful. giving them, the, they're, they're, not, they're not, not giving them proper information. Right. And it, it, it's very, very, uh, you really have to watch who is talking to your kids. Right. Right. And I'm, 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 I'm seeing that they're, they're very easily influenced. Very much so. And yeah, your, so, um, yeah. your heart has to be in it. 
you have to be talking to the kids because you want to lift the kids up, not because you want somebody to say, oh, you talk to the kids. There's a difference in are you helping people out of the goodness of your heart or are you hoping to gain something on your end? Well, I guess that's, well, not even, not even that. What I'm saying is there are some people who have the right intentions. They don't have the proper information, though. Mm. They, have the, they have the right intention, but they just don't have the proper information. So in their heart, they feel like they're doing a good thing, which, you know, I commend you. But if you're giving them the wrong information, the wrong philosophies on life, okay, that's a problem, right? Because they're, they're so influential. I mean, in, influenceable, if that's the right. word. If that's an actual word, I don't know. Right. Now, you're, that, yeah. I agree. Now, um, with that being said, then if somebody is interested in taking on that, that you know, going to the schools, you're saying they need to have the right philosophy, or you're saying they need to study certain materials, or what? What would gear them up to be ready for that, um, that pr- opportunity when it presents itself? Um, probably become successful in whatever you're going to be talking about. Okay. So. If you have not um, been successful in business or entrepreneurship, don't talk to the kids about entrepreneurship in terms of the how-tos. Right. If you successfully graduated high school and you got through college, talk to the kids about that. Mm. Talk to like the like the, the boy that broke your heart and you figured out how to start loving yourself. Talk to the kids about that. Mm. Right. We don't have to all talk about entrepreneurship or make the kids feel like, um, or or make yourself feel like, you know, you're you're above them and you're you know you make money. So like, come on, like talk about what you know. Right. And I see a lot of that happening where people they're not talking about what they know. They're talking about what they think the kids want to hear. And if you are not an expert, if you have not um, become successful in that area by your own standards. Right. By their own standards. Right? And right. then they're going to the schools to teach the kids about success, but they're teaching them philosophies that haven't even worked for them, mm. which is an issue. That's so powerful. So don't talk on something unless you're a guru or an expert on the, the matter because you don't want to give them the wrong information that sends them down the wrong path. Exactly. You're not sure if it works. The guy came to me the other day, like, yeah, I'm about to write a book um, called. Uh, uh, um, what was it? Becoming a, 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 a something about um, how to be a billionaire, right? Right. And I'm right. like, you know, with all due respect, are you a billionaire? He said, No. I said, Well, stop telling people how to become a billionaire, right? Because two things happen. One, it's apparent that you either don't know what you're talking about, meaning you're giving information that's not even working for you, or it's like based off theory, mm. right? So, like, because because if 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 what you're teaching could really change someone's life, right. you would at least change yours. Right. You may change your own life. Stop, stop, stop telling people how to be a billionaire because you read some stuff and it sounds good coming yeah. off your lips and you're articulate and like, come on. Whatever, you, whatever you've whatever you accomplished, talk about that. Do me that favor. Now, picking back and off of that, because um, one of my movements I have is called Thinking Like a Billionaire, and it's where I encourage people to think like a like if they were a billionaire, how would you move in the situation versus if you are who you are today? Like, I act as if I am a billionaire, so I everything I do is how they would. Is that a good thing to do, you think, or is it more, is that also kind of leading people the wrong way? Well, we're not a, we're not 100% sure how a billionaire thinks. Mm. Mm. Are we? Now that's true. We only know what we see on TV like, or what we've read, but exactly. It's like um, reading how to reading how to swim. You're teaching people how to swim based off a book. Mm. Or or someone you know swam really really good, and you read whatever they wrote in the book about swimming, and right. now you're teaching people how to swim, but you still don't know how to swim yourself. Right. You can't even do what you're trying to teach them to do. That's part. That's dope. Come on. And so, well, like I said, you have a 930 deadline, so I won't keep you on. I really appreciate the conversation, man. This has been powerful. Um, before we get off here, can you tell the fans where they can go to get the book, um, where they can go to get the Sleepers for Clothing, or I'm sorry, Sleepers for Suckers Clothing, and anything else you've got going on? Yes. Um, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at sleep is the number four suckers, S U C K E R S. Um, sleep is the number four suckers. Um, on Instagram and Twitter, my my 
YouTube channel is Sleep is for Suckers. Same with the number four HD. Sleep is for Suckers HD is my YouTube channel. Um, you can go to my website, sleepisforsuckers.com. Same spelling. Um, pick up apparel. My book is on there as well. And if you you know you like shopping on Amazon, my book is on Amazon as well. So Amazon.com. Just put in my name, David Shans, or Dreams Are Built Overnight. You'll find. And I love the concept you have on your website for the monthly apparel um, option where they can become a member and get, you know, stuff every month and it sends a different Sleepers for Suckers shirt and stuff like that. Um, right. Well, real quick, we're rolling that into, um, oh gosh, yeah, I definitely got to go, but um, we're, we're rolling that into um, my coaching program. So I have a okay. coaching program uh, called Sleepless Night. Sleepless mm. Night, K-N-I-G-H-T-S. Um, and, you know, I'm really, really helping people build, you know, one-on-one strategically and, um, you know, just, 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 just helping people build, man. So this is, this is my pride and joy right now, um, the Sleep With Nice pro- coaching program. And it's, it's, it's not a lot of money, like, it's, uh, right. it's like $100 a month, right? And right. Um, we're building a community. And, um, yeah, so with, with that, you actually get an exclusive shirt every month as well. That's a dope idea, man. Like last night, you had the mastermind call where you had Pierre come on and talk about how to sell stuff. So that was very powerful and stuff like that. So let's say I know you got to get to your next thing, man. It's an honor and a privilege to have you on uh, Stop Me From Radio. As um, soon as this interview's done, I'll send you the link and we'll be flooding the timeline so you'll be seeing it everywhere, man. Wonderful, wonderful. I appreciate you, my brother. All right, man. You have a good night.